Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago Bulls have graced us with some Chicago Bulls scrimmage action. And there is not that much to talk about, but I promise I'd make this video. There are some highlights to take out from the Chicago Bulls. And I want to talk about some standout players that did end up doing pretty well in these scrimmages and something we may be close to looking forward to next season. Without further ado, let's get into it. What's up everybody, it's the Aiden Sports Show. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a Chicago Bulls video in relation to the scrimmage that they decided to premiere not too long ago. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below who did you think stood out out of those scrimmages? Now, of course, if you haven't seen it yet, I do recommend you go watching it for yourself. It is not that long, and you can come back to this video and you can help decide who was the standout player for the Chicago Bulls. And there were quite a few interesting players that did really perform. And I do must say, I am... I have to admit, I am impressed. That's what I'm trying to get across. I am very impressed with this Chicago Bulls scrimmage. Now, of course... The key light, highlight here is offensively, we looked outstanding. Um, that could be due to our poor weakness in defense, which has been known for a long time. Or maybe it's because a lot of players have taken the next step and actually developed their offensive game. Even in these hard, difficult times, we seem to be a better offensive team than I've seen in a long time. But it, despite what you guys may think, um, there are a few standouts that I do want to talk about. I'm going to talk about individual players in this. Of course, um... Some G League players, or, or yeah, some G League players, Windy City Bulls players did come up and do, do the scrimmage as well. So in the end, there were a few very interesting individuals. Now, before we go into those, I want to big up to the Chicago Bulls page on YouTube for replying to my comment. I was obviously very excited and they ended up um, showing that excitement back to us. And I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, that's definitely a highlight that I won't forget for a long time. It might be something small like that, but in the end, anything is an accomplishment. And I'm going to take that as such. Now let's get to the standout players. So the scrimmages worked with a team that was red, white, and black. Um, the, the games were up to seven and it was basically normal NBA rules and of course the team switched over time So you saw Zach Levine play for two teams. I think you saw Larry Markin play for two teams. Kobe White played for two teams uh, Yeah, etc. You know how it goes. It's a scrimmage it, It's 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 just basically a bask a short basketball game and it wasn't that much Honestly, it wasn't that much, but I do want to talk about a few of the highlights First of all, I want to talk about is Chandler Hutchinson Chandler Hutchinson in my opinion was probably the most outstanding player in those scrimmages um had very good dunks played very good defense and he was the highlight reel of the show in, in terms of the scrimmages again you don't you didn't see much but Chandler Hutchinson is someone that we've always wanted to keep our eyes on with the Chicago Bulls someone that we really believe that can be something in this franchise and it's good to see that he's performing well in training now again this doesn't necessarily reflect with how well he could be in the regular season. Same with Larry Markin. Larry Markin played well today, but it doesn't necessarily reflect how he'll be towards the regular season. But I do think you need to take it into consideration that these guys have not played in eight months or so. And now that they've come back and and they've and they've done well, it's 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 good. It's good to see Chandler Hutchinson play this well when he's barely even gotten enough game time. Um, in the past few months to actually go and do something to go and get better and it looks like he did get better Like he he, he stood out to me and I might make the only one that believes that but he was definitely one of the standouts Another standout I'd like to discuss is Larry Markkinen as I mentioned before Larry Markkinen from the three-point range in this scrimmage in multiple scrimmage games that he did play he looked very good offensively. Now, of course, the post game is something that I noticed very quickly. He tried to put Zach Levine in the post, and it didn't necessarily work out well for him. Zach Levine got the steal and scored on the other end. But there is something that is always going to be a positive when Zach Levine, when um, Larry Market is in the post. At the end of the day, we need more situations where Larry Markkinen is in the post because he is a good offensive threat from the mid-range, from inside the paint, and from the three-point line. No one can dispute that he's a good offensive player. So you need to put Larry Markkinen in the best positions to win. Unfortunately, in that situation, Zach Levine got the better of Larry Markkinen. But that does not mean we keep on... Um, discrediting his post game. We need that's just part of the game. He does need to improve alongside of his defense, which is an, a big issue that we've been talking about for a long time. 
Again, I didn't really notice Larry Markkinen's defense that much. Uh, I noticed more Kobe White was allowing Zach Levine to get past him. I noticed that a bit, but in, in saying that, Larry Markkinen did impress from the three-point line. That's his game at the end of the day. That's what he does most of his time on the floor doing, shooting threes, and he seemed to have a good range out there. And there we go. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm going to get to Kobe White last because there were a few interesting things. There was a press comp, uh, I guess a Q&A with Artorias and, and Kobe White in separate uh, parts of the scrimmage. And um, Kobe White was talking about his favorite fast food restaurants and stuff. Like, no, I don't think that stuff, in my opinion at least, that will necessarily mean a lot to me because I'm not from America. These fast food places are different names than here. So, yeah, okay. And um, honestly... It was basically what an honor it was to be in the second team, how good Billy Donovan will be for the Chicago Bulls. Everyone's really excited and positive. And basically what the players are feeling is what we're feeling. And that's a big um, that's a big thing as well that we do need to take into consideration, man. These players are just as excited to see Billy Donovan, Artorias, Mark Eversley, all these changes. They're just as excited as we are for these changes, and I think that's a big statement. That's a big thing to that's a big thing to preach to um, the Chicago Bulls fans, and um, I'm very happy that he was able to do that. Obviously, we did see Wendell Carter, Zach Levine, Otto Porter. We saw a lot of people, but no one really stood out. Zach Levine did one really good layup, but and, and he scored a couple threes. But you expect that from Zach Levine. That's not really a standout. Um, but yeah, he ended up, Zach Levine did pretty well in these scrimmages as well. Wendell Carter got a good dunk in there. Gafford got a good dunk in there. Look, there's not that much. I'm basically going on scraps. So the last person I do want to talk about is Kobe White. Kobe White in these scrimmages probably had the most highlights. And, um, he had a very good playmaking pass. I believe it was to Gafford or could, I can't remember who it was to, but a really good pick and roll, very good pass. Again, he said that he was focusing on his playmaking and it looked like it there. Really good playmaking play from Kobe White. And of course, the man had two buzzer beaters in two scrimmage games. Oh my goodness. And it's in a row as well. So look, <laughs> it's, it, it's not much, but I haven't seen the Chicago Bulls play in so long, but it's been so long since I've actually seen the Bulls play. I miss the team. I do miss this team. I miss this franchise. I miss the regular season. Um, I think we've all, I think all teams outside of the playoffs have really, really missed their teams playing basketball, whether they're good or bad. I think all of us really missed our teams. And I, it's no exception here with Chicago. I miss this team. I miss this team. I miss playing basketball. And um, it doesn't help being in a lockdown in Australia because I can't go do any, any of those, those things myself. But in uh, watching the Chicago Bulls, it made me happy, man. Even if it was for about 20 minutes or so, um, it was good and I enjoyed it. So that's going to be the end of this video. Seven minute video, eight minute video. It's a short video. I'm not going to go and extend it to what it was. I can't show highlights, unfortunately. Pretty sure the Chicago Bulls own the rights to those highlights. Maybe other channels would be able to do that. That's something that I just simply can't do. So in saying that, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Did you enjoy the scrimmages and who was your standout? In my opinion, the standout was Chandler Hutchinson, but you cannot ignore Kobe White's two buzzer beaters. Absolutely not. You cannot do that. Filthy, filthy, filthy. And um, one of them was on Zach Levine, man. That's our best player. So, hey, Kobe White looks ready for next season already, and I'm excited to see what we can do. I missed it. I really did. And this, even if it was for 20 minutes, it brought a smile to my face, and I can't wait to see more. Have a wonderful day, guys. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. The next Chicago Bulls video I'd like to talk about is interesting because I'm leaning towards talking about Wendell Carter very soon. And um, maybe that's the next one that I go for. Also, there is going to be a trades video uh, discussing the recent trade rumors and trades that could potentially happen. Even if they're so outlandish, it probably won't happen. There's been a lot of links to some trades. Of course, that's what you're going to get after the, after the regular season and the playoffs and the championship. You're going to get all these things. So I'm going to be talking about that as well. Have a wonderful day. Take care. And peace.